I'm Jill Sonich in the Department of Psychology, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's event. Um, for all the students and the family, we're very pleased to have you here. Um, I'd like to introduce the faculty who are here on uh, stage with me and uh, say a little prayer for me while I'm in this heavy week. So I could not afford to go here today, but here we go. So I'd like to introduce Debbie Ma, who you just heard and introduce you. Dr. Chung Ying Jin. Dr. Lee Spen, Dr. Bethany Drew, Dr. Sarah Brignucci, Professor um, Gidget Biani, and <laughs> Dr. Gary Cates, Dr. Jonathan Martinez, Dr. Omar Lulapapa, Dr. Justin Kantner, Dr. Hugh Wayne. And Dr. Sunny Hang and Dr. Jill Felici, who's also the associate chair of the I begin with the faculty because um, these are an extraordinary group of individuals who have taught, mentored, nurtured all of the students here at various times in their academic paths. Um, they have written countless letters of recommendation to make sure that they're successful in the next journey they want to take, whether that's getting into the workforce or going on to graduate school, as you'll see many of them will be doing. And um, they really are just the heart, part of the part of the department that really propel our students into the successful places they go to. So I just want to take a moment and thank them again for all the I would also like to um, introduce and thank Dr. Dean Searcy, who is sitting here, right to the right over here, my right. Many of the students might not even know this, but Dr. Searcy goes out of his way to make sure that he meets with students, gets to know them, knows our programs and our department. He's a tremendous work for the psychology department and students. And many of you in the audience now have received travel funding from the Dean's office. That's the guy right there. <laughs> so thank you very much for all of I would also be remiss if I didn't thank the staff, the tremendous psychology staff. Uh, I think many of them are here now. I will just name them. Many of you will know them. And if you don't, um, you should know what they do behind the scenes. So um, I'd specifically like to acknowledge and thank, uh, with a tremendous amount of thanks, to Lita Chow.
Okay, year after year organizes this event to seem as smooth as a bit does. Um, she is truly, truly the heart and soul of our department, and it's with yet, you know, happiness for her that I announce that she will be retiring in a month. So it is a joyous event for her. So. My hope is that she will come back and visit. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to thank Martin Castro, also standing back there, um, for <laughs> to organize the program, the brochures, the certificates, and beyond. So thank you, Martin. Um, Alex Montes, who well, Alex is the go it to including technology. And so his role here is setting up all the technology with Dr. Ainsworth. Um, and so um, we can have the live streaming of it. So thank you, Alex. And there's two more people I want to thank staff. Judy Friedman. Where's Judy? Where's Judy with the cat? Make sure you give her a big thanks. She's so fantastic. She she's just does just about everything in the department that needs to be, including signing up this event. And also Evelyn Soria, who I don't think is here right now because she's manning our um, woman in our office. Um, and that's uh, because she again is a, is a very valuable staff because she's organized the, the finance that goes on around this event. So thank you, Evelyn. So um yeah. Last but not least, I want to acknowledge the individuals here in attendance who are here to celebrate the success of all of our students, whether the family, the friends, and so thank you so much for being here. We see you, we recognize what you do for the students. You would be surprised how often they talk about you and how they applaud you for all of your support for them. And um, they are the product of all of the help and support and uh, praise you've, you've given them. So we thank you for being here to celebrate all of that with us and um, know that we share in your joy of their success. Thank you very much. I will now turn it back uh, to Devin Mom and see. And Dr. Mazzani, mentioned Professor Gainsworth, the Honorable Professor Gainsworth, just thusly. Uh, he is not on stage with us because he's helping live stream the event, as he said. And I also want to take a moment to thank uh, Professor Zani for the last few years, especially shepherding us through an unprecedented, difficult time uh, managing the pandemic and our return to the campus. I'm standing on the tip of the So great to see so many of you as we celebrate our amazing graduates. As Dr. Rosani said, my name is Jenny Mono, professor in the psychology department. I've been here for about 11 years. Uh, and on behalf of the entire awards committee, whose time and effort went into planning today's event, I want to welcome you all to the annual opening and awards ceremony. This event is one that we all look forward to, the faculty and staff look forward to every year, um, as a culminating celebration of a years long journey for our students. And we're in the classroom with you all day, seems like all day, every day, sometimes even at night. Um, I had meetings with students, 11 p.m., emergency meetings, some crisis happened on death or whatever. So we're with you doing all the things all the time. Uh, we watch you grow and develop as scholars and practitioners. And in labs, we've grown close to you, mentoring your projects and advising you through the content of higher education. In some cases, helping you to figure out your next step and challenging you to the final potential. It is truly a delight to celebrate you each along with your family and friends today. <clears throat> I've prepared a few remarks that I hope will offer a timely snapshot into this transition period in your lives. And I want to situate this within the broader context of major events occurring right now that will hopefully reverberate through the rest of your lives. 
So here I'm referring to a significant advancement in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Some of you may have lamented the fact that ChatGPT came on the scene a little too late, a little bit too late for you to write your thesis, a little bit too late to do your senior thesis. Um, and in hindsight, you'll be able to say, I wrote my own papers when I was a student, um, just like you walked uphill to school a minute ago. Um, but more seriously, I did want to take an opportunity to say a few words about the importance of everything that you've learned during your time at CSUN and how those skills have prepared you for a life with an ever-increasing presence of AI. No doubt, AI has transformed our world in countless ways, bringing us new levels of convenience, efficiency, and innovation. But it has also created new challenges, like inundating us with a flood of information that can be overwhelming, misleading, or even dangerous. We have seen firsthand how technology and AI can be weaponized against individuals and the systems that organize society. And these realities make clear the importance of critical thinking. But what does it really mean to think critically? It means being able to evaluate information, arguments, and evidence in a systemic, systematic, and skeptical way. It means questioning assumptions, considering alternative perspectives, and being open to changing our minds when new information arrives. And that last one is really the kicker, right? Critical thinking is not about stifling yourself and your pre-existing beliefs, but updating and integrating in a rational way. Critical reasoning means being able to recognize and avoid logical fallacies, recognizing correct or cognitive biases, and spot propaganda when you see it. Critical reasoning means being able to parse truth from non-truth and synthesize various positions into a coherent worldview. Developing critical thinking skills is not easy. I'm sure many of you will attest to that. And it should not be conceived of as a vapid, abstracted buzzword in higher education. Rather, I think critical thinking is something that requires ongoing effort and, and practice. And often, it requires doing the opposite of what comes natural. Through your time at CSUN, you have been taught to ask questions, to be curious, and not take information at face value. At least that was what was supposed to be on the menu. The supposed threat of AI does not invalidate the work that you have done to advance your mental acuity. Rather, I'd argue that the skills you have now are more important than ever. Researchers have provided powerful examples of the ways in which AI can amplify biases, spread disinformation, and create false realities that reinforce our existing beliefs. And it's up to you to make sure that you critically evaluate these inputs, work together to create greater justice in the system, and be an active participant in the information that you choose to expose yourself to. As you move forward to the next stages of your life, I will challenge you to continue to cultivate your critical thinking skills, to seek out diverse perspectives, consider the source, question assumptions, and don't be afraid to change your mind when the evidence warrants it. By doing so, you will not only be better equipped to navigate the complexities of an AI-driven world, but you will also be able to be prepared to make a positive impact on the world around you. So with that, I wish you congratulations again, and good luck on your future endeavors. Um, we're going to begin with undergraduate awards, and I will um, call the presenters of those awards, awards and they have prepared some remarks for each of the students. Um, the first is Dr. Stephanie Drew. All right, I need Nina Muhammad. And as she makes her way up there, um, I'm just going to contextualize this. We were all given very strict instructions in multiple emails to not go over 90 seconds. Um, from her, from her, I was told verbally as well many times. That's not being talked about. Um, so to contextualize, don't start my time right here. No, I'm gonna, I just want to contextualize that uh, this award is meant to give the student that really shows exceptional exceptional potential uh, as a future graduate student, which is going to be academic, and just so you know, academics, we are expected to do you know, teaching, research, and service. That's just contextualizing. All right, we're ready, Gary? All right. Um, I usually slow down for teaching, but I have a lot of things to say, so hold on, here we go. All right. Nita currently holds an impressive 3.86 GPA as a psychology major, English literature might consistently have been on the team's honor list since 2018, and she's been the recipient of the season's prestigious presidential scholarship of up to 1,500 students, not once, but twice. Uh, in addition to that, she has been awarded the UCLA Prep Scholarship Award, and awarded the General Honors Research Fellowship. Most recently, she was granted the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program on Financial Award for her postdoctoral work. 
And just this last week, she was given a seat on outcoming undergraduate work. Uh, last week, another survey, one of the highest awards in university grants to undergraduates. In terms of teaching, she's been a supplemental instructor at the Tfunk Math 140 course, Smart Lab Tutor and Tfunk Learning Resource Center, and has been to my lab. That's the teaching part. Nina has served as my lab manager, because she typically helps my graduate student in my lab. Nina keeps track of her, all of our communications, scheduling, and details for all of the active projects for our team. This is no small task, because I currently have nine graduate students and 17 undergraduate students, and 18 active projects slash students. She has served as a CAP senior mentor, volunteer time at the department event, in which prospective season students can tour the research lab, and is the only undergraduate student in the university hiring committee for the new undergraduate research director. So about her research. She was the lead researcher of three experimental paragraphs that she designed. She's also simultaneously been a research assistant in the Research Assistant Brain and Motion Attention Development Lab over at USC, but we're not talking about that. She shared authorship on eight posters, presented at annual meetings of Science and Neuroscience, International Society of Health and Psychobiology, and Association of Psychological Science, Sciences, and she currently has two first author manuscripts we plan to submit this summer. I can say with absolute conviction that Nina is unequivocally one of the most accomplished undergraduate students with whom I've had the pleasure of working in the last 10 years at CSUN, and she has demonstrated unprecedented potential to graduate students. Perhaps the strongest testament to her potential to graduate students is her acceptance to no less than five doctoral programs. She's received acceptance into UC Davis with an offer of a Costa Rica Scholarship, UC Santa Barbara with an offer of a Chandler Scholarship, Ohio State University with an offer of a Dean's Graduate Enrichment Fellowship, and when she turned them down, added on the University Fellowship. Uh, University of Illinois is in Japan, Champaign, and the University of Pennsylvania. In the fall, she is selected to go to the University of Pennsylvania and receive her doctorate in communication. Please join me in congratulating me. Thank you. Okay, uh, Professor Jill Pulse. Hey, I cannot talk that fast. Thanks so much. I'd like to invite uh, Victoria Halset here. So I am honored to present the Delmar Nix Award to Victoria. Victoria exemplifies the type of person this award is intended for. It's to recognize scholarship and service to the department. She has shown an exceptional level of scholarship. She's maintained a very high GPA while also being a research assistant and completing all of her responsibilities as a Bill Clodair Scholar. In my lab, Victoria was always looking for ways to contribute. She was extremely helpful with all aspects of the research process. In addition, Victoria completed a summer research internship at UC San Diego last summer where she had the opportunity to learn about cognitive development research with young children. Most recently, Victoria has taken the lead on a poster we presented at the Western Psychological Association Conference, and she has been developing her own project and is currently writing an IRB proposal for that research. Victoria has also volunteered as a pedagogical aide in my statistics lab for three semesters where she showed amazing patience and a gift for explaining challenging concepts to students who are struggling. Lastly, during her time as Lisa, she also continued her work as a yoga instructor. Victoria's current plans are to take a gap year to continue developing her research experience before applying to graduate programs. It has been such a pleasure getting to know and work with Victoria over the last few years, and I'm excited to see what the future will bring. I have no doubt that she will have an impressive career. Dr. Sunny King. Okay, so I'm not the best talker either. So <laughs> can I invite um and uh and I didn't see Lady can get get the one <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so this over. Uh, is given to a students uh, who have demonstrated some scholarship and an exceptional record of the service to the department, university, and community. I am not nearly enough for this award because she's not only an exceptional student with over like a 3.9 GPA, 
but she has also spent a lot of time to help others and the animals. For example, she has been an active member of the Blues Projects in one campus for the past three years, and she was awarded for the Oak Campus uh, Crisis Tax Line to help people in critical situations, also motivate people, uh, individuals with disabilities, to try them to adapt with sports and then took care of the aging members. Uh, she traveled to um, orphanages in uh, Quintana, Mexico to provide educational service to the children in the orphanages. She did all this service, uh, uh, both campus and off campus service, while she was working in my lab for the past two years. So Emma is definitely has a big heart and she plans to take one year off uh, to gain more life experiences before pursuing her master's degree in either clinical psychology or social work to continue help others. Uh, and uh, it was amazing and then um, rewarding journey for me to be your teacher and mentor for the past few years. I truly enjoyed every moment uh, we have worked together. Congratulations and the very best wishes for your bright future. All right, Stanley is getting the University of Service Award, and this is for the student who's made the most uh, contributions to the well being of the, the local community through their service, research, or activities. Um, and um, I don't have a prepared set of remarks because there's, there's nothing that I could write that would actually sum up what Stanley means to me. Um, he, when I first met him, um, he was having some difficulty keeping up with the uh, deadline and said, hey, are you working right now? He goes, yeah. How many hours? 65. You're taking how many classes? Full time. And you're doing what? You're, you're in classes, you're working with your church, you're a project rebound student, which is a program for formerly incarcerated students, and you're working on all those things and so much more. You're winning all these awards, and you know, like, he knows the dean and the VP of this and that, and I'm just like, I haven't even met this I've been here for 12 years. <laughs> so he, he's so involved in the campus and local community. He's done so much for so many people, despite all the things that I um, could not even imagine someone who's been in the system would have to endure and conquer in their life after this. Um, and so he's just an amazing person. And you heard the laugh. That the laugh is, is it? It's deep, right? It's thoughtful. It is heartwarming. It is joyful. And that's who Sam is for me. So um, he's going to the criminal justice PhD program in the fall at Rutgers University. Congratulations. Okay, and Dr. Stephanie Drew and Dr. Lee Sten. All right, for brevity's sake, and to stay within the 90 second time limit, I'm going to be talking to you. Ben has been approved. Uh, all right, so um, this is the Robert Derby Monument Research Award, which is to be given to a student that has completed outstanding scholarship and quantitative methods data analysis. In my lab, Justin is involved in, <laughs> involved in the analyses for a post presentation at APS examining TikTok usage and anxiety and depression and self important symptoms. Using multiple regression analyses. He's also completed additional analyses for an abstract accepted at the annual meeting for APA, Associate, uh, sorry, American Psychological Association, post a presentation examining ADHD symptoms, personality, and performance on a sustained attention task. 
um, who's a CPT. And for that, he actually did a complex path analysis. I wasn't actually sure about how to do it, but he walked me through it. Uh, he will be doing the analysis for a manuscript. We'll be preparing, um, looking at TikTok usage. We'll be submitting this summer for publication. And he shared authorship on four posters presented at the annual meeting of the Society for Neuroscience and the Association for Psychological Sciences. In collaboration with Dr. Lee Sven, Justin contributed to comparing classical test theory and item response theory to validate the PSS. Justin used IRT and CTT for scale validation of Dr. Fenn's conspiracy belief scale for mass shootings. He validated several Dr. Fenn's survey, including the belief in a just world scale, mental health stigma scale, and the religious fundamentalism scale. He has also created structural equation modeling, models investigating the relationship between conspiracy beliefs, just world, religious fundamentals, and mental health stigma for presentation in the research pathways course. In the fall, Justin will be pursuing his master's degree in experimental psychological science at the University of Minnesota. Please join me in congratulating him. Up here, please. All right, it's my absolute pleasure to present this award to you today. This award is for someone that's made substantial contribution to our community, especially through SciPi, which is our international honors society and is a student led organization, along with several other students. Beatrice has been instrumental in helping to reignite our Psychic Department Club, helping bring in outside speakers from relevant career paths and speakers from our department. She also helped in shaping social media for several of our psychology club organizations. And I can tell you, it was absolutely stunning content, really great. Um, she also volunteered for several organizations on campus, including Strength United, where she provided advocacy services and mental health services there. But I think the, the thing that sticks out the most to me also is how in every endeavor that I've had and seen Beatrice engage with is, is, um, uh, is that she manages so much to build community in those interactions. Um, she takes a genuine interest in her peers and, and is always asking genuine questions to get to know them or follow up on things that are important to them. As a mentor in our senior, in our uh, fellowship mentoring program, her mentee told me personally how much she appreciated um, that she brought her to several additional department events and really helped her feel a sense of belonging in the department. And for these reasons, I want to say thank you. Um, uh, you even brought that sense of belonging to me. Um, your thank you card is truly one of the most heartfelt cards I've ever received from a student. Um, and I really appreciate you as a person. I'm just so thankful I met you and to be part of your journey. And for all these reasons, I know you're going to be a wonderful therapist one day. You are accepted into several ministry programs for counseling. Um, your clients will be lucky to have a thoughtful and caring person to work with them. Congratulations on all your accomplishments. Thank you. 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 Th
to support the aspirations of CSUN students, hoping to make meaningful behavior a change in the lives of others. This year, it's important to acknowledge Alex McConium, Gardena's husband, and Liza McConium, Alex's sister, for their exceptional generosity for this year and continuing to support this particular award. I am pleased to award this year two recipients for the Darren and McConium Award. One is Timothy Young, and our brother, congratulations. It's Debbie and Vivek. Okay, I'll speak briefly on um, the Jose Rafael Salar Support. Um, the Jose Rafael Salar Scholarship for Excellence in the Practice of Behavior Analysis was established by the Behavior Learning Network, uh, an agency where uh, Jose Rafael was employed. This endowment provides one or more annual scholarship awards for grad student in applied behavior analysis in the Master's Program here in Dusty Jose was uh, an undergrad and an MSABA graduate here at CSUN, uh, and he amassed a, a large number of academic accolades on his journey. He credited his time in the ABA program for enhancing his passion for working with disabled children and the pivotal connections he made with faculty, peers, professors, and mentors, all of whom he deeply uh, valued well beyond graduation. Throughout his professional career, Jose found great fulfillment working with children and celebrating their achievements and was an incredibly bright light in our field of applied behavior analysis. His quest to help others coupled with his compassion, brilliance, humility, and graciousness was unsurpassed. This year, I am thrilled to award Debbie and Erica the initial, our first, Jose Rafael Sparks graduate award. Thank you. Thank you so much. That actually concludes our undergraduate ceremony. We're going to have a five minute of intermission just to arrive in the room. If you want to have some photos and things like that. Um, maybe one quick last thing. The faculty on the stage who presented those awards care immensely about you all. I know sometimes you leave here and it kind of feels awkward to come back or you don't think that we'll remember you. Maybe we will not remember your exact name, or maybe we will look different. We will look way older, but um, <laughs> it means a lot just to hear from you. And when you stop in and let us know what you're doing, so please uh, just invite you on behalf of all of us um, to reach out to us and just keep us updated on your journey.
just in your drug life, I have to be made, even though they're pushing in the program. And it's because they create difficult to wrangle these people. They like each other too much, they're chatting, they're passing notes. That's why. Okay, um, we are moving to the graduate award presentation. That's true. Now they're calling me out. Okay, let's to organize you. Um, our first graduate award will be presented by Dr. I'm so honored to present this award to Sushi today. Um, <laughs> Rishi, uh, you've accomplished so much uh, in your short two year time here in CSUN. Honored to offer this award to you. Um, just to give you all a, a little rundown of some of her accomplishments. Um, so she has really thrived in so many of uh, her roles here. Academically, she's maintained a stellar GPA over 3.9, all while engaging in scholarship and working nearly 30 to 40 hours per week during her studies. So you can understand how busy she has been. Um, in scholarship, she developed an impressive thesis idea on jury decision making that expanded into a three experiment study for which she's collected data on two experiments and one of those was her thesis. Um, uh, we are going to work on publishing that over the summer. Um, Sristi also has participated in two other research projects with collaborators from three other institutions and she presented that work at the American Psychology Law Society. Um, and while I'm a cognitive psychologist by training, Swishki and I were really outnumbered by social psychologists in, with our collaborators, and I think that peer pressure got to her because she was accepted to a social psychology PhD program at the University of Albany. So congratulations on that. Um, I'm so glad I'll continue to work with you on research and hopefully sneak in a few discussions on horror movies and vampire weekend from here to back. Um, you have a real appreciation for learning and for critical thinking, and I really appreciate it when you bring your opinion to the table, and I know you'll continue to develop this skill in your doctoral program. You have really big ideas for policy change and social change, and I can't wait to see how your ideas will get translated into research and future practice as you continue to grow as a scientist. Thank you for making the past few years so enjoyable as well. I'm selfishly sad I will lose you as a student, but I'm simultaneously thrilled I'll gain you as a colleague in a few short years. So congratulations to you and to your family. I can't wait to see all the things that you'll do. Hey, um, I'm Professor Drew and Professor Aitler, who have had three outfit changes. <laughs> Come on up there. Make it run. Yeah, my family did have a privilege to applaud as often as loudly as possible. I think yeah, people didn't get applause enough for anybody here. More applause than applause. So, this is Jesus, so or Jesus, or uh, JD, as uh, some of you may come to know. When, so those you don't know me, I'm like one of those staff students in the department. And so when Jeannie was up, was introduced to me, and we started talking, I realized, yeah, I don't even know what to do with the thing, because he pretty much leaves up, I, I didn't know if I could teach him anything, really. I didn't know what I had to offer him as a mentor. And uh, he came to me knowing stuff that uh, someone from a community college, a transfer year, shouldn't know. Like it should be illegal for them to know stuff. I can show And it made me really just think of my whole thing. But um, I think the, the best thing we have done as a community for, for is to just teach him how to tolerate the rest of us uh, more. Like that, that's the most growth that he's done. I think he's done more to teach other students in his departments uh, things like back in response to 
Like you've ever modeled and all kinds of stuff. I've been trying forever to get people in to do their job. Thank you. So this is the Don Butler Award. I'm sure Don Butler would be immensely proud to know that Jamie is getting awarded. And I can think of a better way to do it. So good. Congratulations, Jamie. Thank you. I actually wasn't going to talk her before she made it up, but I don't want to do nothing. Jesse Gluck has demonstrated strong aptitude for multivariate statistics in several different forms. He has maintained an impressive 4.0 GPA across our graduate cur curriculum, which is a heavy quantity of statistics emphasis. He has such a firm grasp of his material that he was selected as a graduate pedagogical assistant for our latent variable analysis and seminar, a role which he actively participated in facilitating the learning of his peers and helping teach them the content as well. He has also applied his skill set in his many research endeavors that include examining the transferability of skills created in virtual reality to the real world, comparing of ocular motor impacts of reading on augmented reality, virtual reality, computer screens, tablet, and paper mediums, contributing to the development of a scale that's been validated to assess Zoom fatigue, as well as a very ambitious thesis looking at playback speeds, going from really fast playback speeds to not playback speeds, and how that affects comprehension, memory, etc. He has multiple conference poster presentations, and he's presented at annual meetings of Society for Neuroscience, Association for Psychological Science, and AP and Technology, Mind, and Society as their annual meetings. In the fall, Justin will pursue his doctoral degree in cognitive psychology at the University of Colorado Boulder. Please join me in thanking Justin. We got, we got that out. Professor Omar, we will talk. Okay, so Eric Benenza. <laughs> so I'd like to um, congratulate Eric in receiving the Robert Ramey Award which is given to our most outstanding clinical psychology graduate student, which, and this represents excellence in academia, in academics, research, and clinical skills. Um, you can tell from that applause. <laughs> he had the warm and soul, he, the way he talks to you, he talks to students, I was getting, um, I was getting compliments from undergraduate students that would go to tutoring. He's like, this is really nice graduate student. He helped me with the paper. I'm like, was St. Eric? And surely it was. Eric was nominated by three faculty for this award, Dr. Cates, Dr. Martinez, and I, just to give you an idea of how, how we regard your skill and your expertise in the, in the department. Like, I would hear, I would get random emails like, um, complimenting his work and his presentation for the semester. And also, he was one of the best lab managers I've ever had. So, um, I'm gonna that, but that's not it, right? Um, he, he conducted two field placements with Dr. Rizani in the Buddha Exciting Clinic, Dr. Case at Assessment Clinic. He did two research projects, um, one focusing on the experience of Latinas and Black women in the tech industry, and one focusing on the experiences of Latinas as first-generation students. And I do qualitative. I don't mess with quantitative. But Eric like, let's, let's bring that in. And he figured it out and brought that into various poster presentations. We're going to publish one of these papers this summer. And he did this all while uh, managing a full course load, managing... Um, Full workload, um, 
seeing, seeing his family and, and making sure that they were okay and taking care of people in the life, right? Um, so I want to say that congratulations. It's un logro familiar. Eric will be going to the University of Alabama Clinical Psychology Program, a PhD. Congratulations, Eric. So Isabel is being awarded the Clinical Scientist Award, which is uh, an award that is given to students in the Clinical Psychology Graduate Program who um, best represent a combination of clinical and applied research. So let me tell you a little bit about Isabel. So Isabel. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with in both clinical um, setting in my anxiety and mood clinic that I direct, as well as my research uh, program, looking at dementia, neuropsychological um, uh, compromises in individuals with dementia, and uh, also some cultural work. So Isabel came to me and my research work already having gained a lot of experience um, during the pandemic of all times. She was able to work with a, a very prominent group of neuropsychologists at the Harbor UCLA Medical Center, who are also looking at some cultural um, work in the area of uh, uh, test assessment. And so um, I was privileged that she had already come with that experience. That was wonderful. But I was not prepared for how um, ambitious she is and how uh, confident she is already coming into the program. So for her, as a scholar, her research, uh, uh, her thesis was uh, centered around, and it was something she designed herself, looking at neuropsychological tests for Latinx communities, okay. developing tests that are in uh, Spanish for Spanish speakers. And so this is a huge undertaking. It's a two and a half test pathway to administer, the, the number of participants to recruit to do this with. This is with healthy individuals and cognitive compromised individuals. I was a little scared, I'll be honest. I thought, oh my gosh, this is like doctoral level work, but you know, you can't look scared. So it's like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> it comes with it. Thinking, yeah, she'll recognize she's not going to want to do that much work. However, Isabel took the task. She did it in a very quiet, self assured way of hers um, and worked methodically to recruit the participants she needed to recruit, um, which is still in progress. Um, as well as do the primarily the data collection, and now she will be storing the data, analyzing the data, and we'll have the pieces written for the first presentation and events. So this is a huge. I know I don't know if everyone uh, appreciates how big this is. She did this while she continued her work with Harvard and CLA, presenting at national and international conferences, as well as um, being the primary lab manager uh, for my. Dementia. So th these are a huge, huge accomplishments. And kudos to Isabel, who does it just seamlessly. Um, in her clinical practicum, as I said, she works with individuals with anxiety uh, and or depression and mood disorders. And um, here she again uh, was one of the first individuals, one of the first students in the clinic to say, Yeah, I'll take on a client when she was trained to do so. And took on one of the toughest cases, has made remarkable progress, and is just wonderful at applying all the kind of techniques she's learned in the So, Isabel, you're truly remarkable. I know you're taking uh, the fall to, to apply for graduate programs, so that gives you a year before you were accepted into a doctoral program. I know you're going to go to an amazing program, and you're going to have a lot to contribute to your work. Congratulations, I could not be any more happy. Dr. Quillis. Okay, I'd like to invite Tyler Coleman. 
My fifth name, Adam Holler, with the Scholar Practitioner Award in Clinical Psychology, and it's given to a student who has demonstrated outstanding clinical skills that are informed by scholarly work. So I'm very delighted to present this award to Tyler. She's been a joy to work with over the last two years. Um, before she even started the program, she came in with a lot of um, research skills already and research experience from her undergraduate time. Um, and even before she started the graduate program, she started getting involved with my research lab and has really been very active in my lab during that time. Um, she's helped with all different aspects of the research project, and she's taken the lead on presenting two different posters at the Western Psychological Association. Um, I think something that's also very special about Tyler is that she was really willing to reach out and help other students. Um, though we had students that were working on their own research project in the lab, and she often came in and helped them with their projects and put in time for that. Um, in terms of clinical field work program, um, Tyler's been actively involved in both clinics every semester in the program. In the anxiety and mood clinic with Dr. Rosani, she advanced to working directly with the client during her second year in the program. And in the assessment clinic with Dr. Cates, she advanced to being clinic coordinator during her second year, and she was very active in conducting testing for the clinic. And in addition to all of these important activities, Tyler has um, maintained an extremely high GPA in her coursework, and she also often works outside in addition to being a full-time student. During her first year in the program, she worked for the department as an instructional student assistant and helped many faculty in the department with their um, classes. And so I'm so thrilled um, that Tyler will be continuing on in her education to pursue a doctor of psychology degree at Cal Lutheran University. And I know she's going to continue to build her skills and have a wonderful career as a clinician. I'm so proud of her. Dr. Shavira. I am Chris Indikanati. It is my great privilege and honor to um, award you with the Graduate Qualitative Research Award. But honestly, Eileen could have won almost any of these awards except for the clinic. For sure. Um, only because Eileen has been an absolutely stellar academic. I always think of her as already a colleague of mine, to tell you the truth. Um, I've known, I've been honored because I've known Eileen since she was an undergraduate. And um, she, she, I think you were a sophomore, a raising junior when I first met you. And she was in my lab, and even though she was a Mark student and wasn't a my Mark scholar, she stayed in my lab. She was in like three different labs as an undergraduate, did summer research opportunities, um, got into the doctor programs, and you're we thinking, well, why is she still here? Um, she didn't think she was ready, and I, you know, I fought her on that one, and, but she was right. She needed a little bit more growth, and is, has grown so much over the past two years as a master's student, thanks to the faculty who have taught her um, these amazing skills, and, and she is ready to go, so now she's ready to go on to a doctoral program. But she has both qualitative and quantitative strengths. Um, she, can, she can do qualitative analyses. If I tell her to, you know, to um, do some qualitative analysis, she'll have it ready by tonight. Um, the same thing with quantitative. She has tutored not only the students in my, and mentored the students in my lab, but uh, many of the students that we see here too, I know. Um, but she's been just absolutely phenomenal. And, um, and you know, even we wrote an, an article, which is now under review, which I'm pretty confident is going to get accepted because it won an award at the Association for Hispanics in Higher Education. Um, conference, it was it won for a best paper, and uh, we wrote the actual paper in what 
two months, 60, yeah, 45 days, I guess. But, and she just, I mean, I just told me to do this, and she did it, you know. So um, she's the second author, and I'm very confident it's going to get published. We have another, she's working on her, her thesis paper, which I've taken a, a, you know, a little glance at it, and it's going to be amazing looking at a documented college student's experiences. But she's equity-minded, right? I didn't have to teach her any of this. She already uses this critical lens. And she, after taking um, a gap period, she's going to go off to a doctoral program in developmental psychology at the University of, of um, Texas, Austin. And I'm so proud of her, of all of her accomplishments. Um, you're going to do so wonderfully, and I can't wait to really call you my colleague. Congratulations. Dr. Fennel will present the next two moments. Well, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Julia up here, please. <laughs> So excited to present the Graduate Service Award to you. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, I mean, there's so many, uh, I was in writing speech, looking at your CV, I mean, I have so many things to say. Um, so I'm just gonna list a couple of the service research. So uh, involved in several leadership positions on, on and off campus, including serving as a peer mentor in our psychology community, and also in the Asian American Studies Department. Um, she has mentored students as lab manager in two separate labs here on, on campus um, and, and now as a manager and mentor for students in our um, community for achievement in psychological science. Um, she is also a budding scholar. She has three peer-reviewed publications already, 11 presentations or invited talks. Um, she is so passionate in our talks, I hear it come through, about mental health services, especially for Asian and military families, and has been working to develop skills and tools to support this community throughout her time here. To this end, she's already worked in two clinics in our campus, um, and I know she's provided mental health services and eager to do more of that moving forward. Um, and when Julia talks about this, these opportunities and future goals, she's really glowing with excitement, and, and I am so excited for her. Um, I appreciate you so much, um, your thoughtfulness, attention to detail, and your eagerness to support and build community here are so inspiring to me. Um, your talent is just multifaceted. I mean, you can do everything from create like beautiful graphics um, to come up with relevant community building events, talk with me about translating clinical psychology research into practice with your clients and mentees, like all in the same conversation. <laughs> um, and I think your future clients are going to be so lucky. I can't wait to read your scholarship and future publications too. Um, I hope you take some time to celebrate yourself and your accomplishments because you really deserve that. And congratulations to you and also to your family, of course, too. And now I'd like to bring Richard. Richard, here you go. Here's your board, Richard. Um, again, looking at your CV, so many different service things, so I'm going to list some of them here. Um, Richard has served in several leadership positions, both in our department and, and on campus. Um, he served as treasurer for the Society for Advancement of Chicano Native Americans in Science. Um, served as a leader in associated students, contributed to our psychology clubs and sci fi and our multicultural psychology association, served as peer mentor for several semesters, and as a leader in our mentorship program, and now serves psychology students as a co manager along with Julia um, for our student success um, center. He has at least seven conference presentations on your club um, from his work in three different research labs and has earns several big scholarships and grants to support his work from prestigious organizations like National Institute of Health. And okay, now I can get a little more personal for you with all of those things. Um, Richard, I met you as a sophomore undergraduate, and you were immediately impressive to me because you had this love of learning, and it was really contagious. 
and you always came to lab meetings and class with curiosity and eagerness, not just to do what was needed, but to really learn and engage with scholarship. You also really brought us into community, wanting to help others, and you've always talked about your strong desire to become an educator and mentor to others um, and to represent students. Um, and um, now you're doing that, right? Now you, I observe you, you are an educator now, it's inspiring. I see the feedback that you give to students um, as my instructional assistant, it's so on point, and perhaps more importantly, it's just um, so. Uh, digestible to students. You have a real skill that you build in um, of being able to communicate to students uh, what their strengths are while also, you know, uh, highlighting where they can grow. And I'm really excited with that. I've learned a lot from in that. I'm really excited for your future students. They're going to be lucky to have you. I said that several times today, Rose. And I'm thrilled that Cognitive Science is going to gain an inspiring skill like yourself as well. Um, a huge congratulations to you, to your family, and um, um, yeah. We have time to get me. We're fine. No. This is fine. All right. I've had the pleasure of working with Allie over the last two semesters for our teaching research program for TURT, where she served as the official instructor of record in one of our laboratory sections that accompanies my research methods class. Allie was accountable for all the responsibilities of the instructor, including content preparation, lecture delivery, assessment of student learning, and using our online learning management system, Canvas, as well as extensive communication with working with students. Throughout our time working together, I've always been struck by Allie's sense of detail and her clear dedication to her students. As you can imagine, this is a, a lot of additional work for a student that is simultaneously meeting the academic demands of a graduate, uh, of a graduate student. However, Allie didn't stop there. She additionally served as instructor of record for a large introductory psychology course in the department's teacher internship program for TIPS, overseen by colleague Kitchen Biani. Related to that work, she also presented an introductory psychology teaching conference. On top of that, Ali also served as a graduate teacher in one of our certificate courses, and both of these commitments further demonstrate her obvious passion for teaching. Beyond the classroom, Ali chose to hone her skills as she opted to complete the season year long AQ course, effective online teaching practices to further develop her skills and serve our students. And I also had the privilege of working with Ali for a teaching assistant fellowship program. This is a competitive program to which graduate students across the university apply, and a small cohort of fellows are selected to receive 15 weeks of intensive training in advanced pedagogy. Allie is leading this summer to work at John Hopkins Center for Talented Youth Program, where she will teach a group of advanced students as a psychology instructor, but don't worry, she will be returning to these in the fall for the 2023-24 academic year as a member of our own department's instructional faculty. Please join me in congratulating Allie Schrader. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Chin. May I invite Bailey Fitzpatrick up here, please? I'm delighted to be here today to present Bailey Fitzpatrick with the Scientist Practitioner Award. This award is granted to the most outstanding graduate student in the area of behavioral clinical psychology. Bailey has demonstrated exceptional clinical skills in conducting assessments and providing treatments that are conceptually systematic with applied behavior analysis. In addition to her remarkable academic achievements maintaining a 4.0 GPA in our graduate program, Bailey is a much loved member of her cohort and has selflessly dedicated her time to supporting her peers. She has served as a student assistant for three of our graduate courses and has served as the program tutor throughout the past year. Bailey is leading several research projects aimed at advancing our understanding of the factors that influence the behavior of caregivers attending to individuals with Alzheimer's disease. Through systematic investigation, she hopes to identify effective strategies capable of mitigating the considerable strain experienced by caregivers when confronted with care recipients' proper behavior, such as aggression and wandering within domestic settings. 
She's also actively engaged in our prevention projects in collaboration with the Hoya Charter School aimed at developing safe, efficient, and socially acceptable prevention assessments for challenging behavior of young children within the community. She has consistently demonstrated a passion for improving the lives of individuals and families grappling with behavioral challenges, and it is my honor to present her with this award. I am delighted uh, to present the graduate aid analysis work on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Kelly Kazemi and if you never put firefighting and behavior analysis together in your mind, Coral is here to change them. Dr. Kazemi notes that Coral has worked on a FEMA-funded project to develop tools to evaluate and improve public messaging regarding fire prevention and safety. With her large multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team of behavioral colleagues, firefighters, fire prevention educators, and communication public health experts, Coral created resources, educational materials, incorporated a feedback loop in that tool and presented findings at various conferences uh, to behavior analysts, analysts, firefighters, and more. Her efforts and contributions in the research have demonstrated the importance of including behavioral scientists in such large-scale, socially significant projects. We are very proud of you and your accomplish accomplishments. Congratulations. On to pudding. Um, I'd like to ask that if you're coming up for pudding, that you come up this way so your family can get a nice photo of you over here, not clustered over here, and then you can this uh, center pathway. Um, and I will call your name. Let's mm -hmm. line up so that a clinical psychology can line up over here. Is that right? Yeah. Ready? Here, from the Michaela and Richards. Bruno Gamboa. Jessica Lewis.
Harashe Minaji. Tyler told him. Now we're moving to psychological therapy. Can I have you all one minute with me? Don't say anything. Oh my god. Oh, it's a good change. What's the. Oh, should I? Oh, time. I'm going to go back here. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Kate. I'm going to see you again. I'm going to be in front of me and the cameras. Sorry, guys. I'm just checking everybody to make sure you can see when this thing is facing you.
Alejandra Bermuda Torres. Giovanna Garrido Blanc. <laughs> Tristy Kuturi. Everybody can get themselves a child advisor. Shyla Terry.
por el tiempo. Muy bien, eso podría ser la única. Congratulations to our two graduating cohort. Um, I would like to invite our groups up to take a group photo. That is always our time. Um, so maybe you can add a clinical. Don't be shy. He said sure. <laughs> you want to get a picture? Okay, clear out. Families, they their smiles, their smiles, they're not even in the picture. Don't go anywhere. And the, they already have the other cohort come up. And then join the side line and take a big one, and then you all. We do all your classes, but you take your step class. Well, she's a bunch of fives, uh, the faculty, maybe she's a bonus, the grand. 